screaming and smacking her face. Doctor, please rescue me from the mess I am in. My son is going to kill me. I don't care about my life. I deserve to die, but I don't want my son to dirty his hands with my filthy blood. I asked, what's the matter, Fatima? She said, I am a widow. My husband died five years ago and left me with four children. My husband's brother rapes me every night in exchange for feeding my children. If he knew I was pregnant, he would provoke my son to kill me. I asked, how old are your son? She said, 15. So I sent her to a specialist. She came back to my office after two weeks, looking very pale and sick. I said, what the matter, Fatima? She said, I came back to thank you, doctor. I got rid of the fetus, but I almost died. The doctor performed the operation without sedating me. The pain I experienced almost killed me. I said, you mean without anesthesia? She said, yes, because I didn't have money, enough money to pay for the drug. So he had to operate without it. So this is how women live under Islamic Sharia. My book, A God Who Hates, is the ultimate embodiment of these radical experiences. But why did I pick the title, A God Who Hates For It? Obviously, having been born and raised as a Muslim has played a major role in shaping my convictions regarding Islam. I have reached a point where I am certain that man internalizes his God and eventually becomes that God. In my book, I attempt to present the Muslim God similar to the way God was introduced to me growing up in Syria, a seemingly intolerant, resentful entity driven by hate. A God who abhors women, who allows his followers to punch and even behead non-Muslims doesn't engender compassion or kindness. To me, the nature of this God is not at all that of a loving being. Now, America has reformed me, around, uh, armed me with knowledge, clarified my vision, and helped me to outline my plan to help liberate victims like my niece and others. I have decided to challenge and to bring Allah to justice. On serious charges like discrimination against women, against non-Muslims, and against anyone who dares to dissent. My daughter Angela, who was born and raised in the United States, was the first one to read my book and provided me with a sense of how Western readers were going to react to the material I present. I still remember the days she came back from school, rushing to my computer to read whatever I had written that day and hearing her screaming, no way, mom. Are you exaggerating? <laughs> it is hard to believe it is true. Over time, I got tired of trying to convince Angela that, unfortunately, what I was describing was indeed my life. Generally speaking, Americans like Angela have been educated to recognize multiculturalism 
at the accepted ethical code that prevent them from evaluating people based on their religious affiliation. Therefore, they mostly adopt the politically correct approach without realizing how dangerous it is to treat Islam only as a religion without understanding the, it is political, political ideology. By that, they overlook the cruelty of Islam's teachings and the long-term damage their choice of whitewashing reality can cause to our precious way of life in a liberal democracy. That's why the army failed to detain Major Hassan prior to the Fort Hood massacre. This is why I always insist that America will never win the war in terrorism until Americans translate Islamic text from Arabic sources without distortion or false falsification. Reading the material will enable them to reach their own personal conclusions and help to understand what kind of enemy they have. Once they know the true nature of their enemy, they will be able to defeat it. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't come here only to introduce my book. I came here carrying a message for you. September 11th was a tragic moment in the history of our nation. But the infiltration of Islamic ideology to our school system, including our universities, is a subject of equal concern. I urge you to treat the spread of Islam into our educational system with the gravity and seriousness it deserves. It is hard for you to understand their values. They certainly don't match yours. Trust me. I have lived under the Islamic suffocating ideology and felt the endless acute pain it inflicted on me. Unfortunately, I have been accused of carrying a hateful message against 